Last on Rich Man, Poor Man, book two. We are here for the most disagreeable duty to pass judgment on a fellow member of the United States Senate. Estep sending an army of witnesses in front of that committee, all lying through their teeth, and there isn't a single thing I can do to disprove them. Mr. Franklin, how did Charles Estep force you to change your story? Did he threaten to have you murdered like Sarah Hunt? I can't get over Maggie. I wish she fought for you. You know, it really is all right. What? For you to have two women in your life at once. After the incident in Vietnam, I instigated an SEC investigation into his company, Tricor International. And what did that investigation reveal? The fact that Charles Estep was terrified. Terrified? Terrified of what? His past, the manner in which Tricor was founded. You've been lying to me ever since I came into this country. If I hadn't lied for your father, he would be in prison right now. Or worse. Was it out of love for me? Or was it the six million dollars he paid you? The investigation had barely begun when he arranged a meeting with me. He asked me to stop my investigation. When I refused, he tried to bribe me. If you go after him, he's going to kill you. He'll try. And Sarah Hunt knew about the bribery and the payoffs, about the internal structure of Tricor, about a man named Albert Dietrich who funded Tricor. That night you were working in Whitby. I opened your safe. I bond Esther with Franklin's name. <laughs> You've always been so damn good to me. <laughs> well, you're telling us a lot of things, Senator, and in all of it, you don't have one piece of evidence. The pieces are all there. They are Mr. all Mr. there, Chairman, and Albert Dietrich is the I give up. I, I can't make head nor tail of the insane ramblings of the Senator here. There are Only things that are... The insane so... thing of these hearings. Mr. Chairman, I... Charles Estep is out there murdering people. Mr. Chairman, he is buying his way to this government. Help me. I have to protect my legislation. That legislation is worthless. Because if Estep is running this country, what you do in Congress doesn't mean a damn thing. go over these on Monday's procedures. If I could just figure out who he is, all the pieces would fall in place. Solving the Times crossword puzzle would be about as useful at this point. These need a signature. When I had Claire Estep on the stand, she was very shaky. You think she was shaky? What do you see yourself Monday morning? If I could get just one more shot at her, I'd take bet she'd crack. Rudy, look. The final vote is Monday afternoon. Now, if you lose that... The identity of Albert Dietrich and a subway token will get you to your nearest unemployment office. Now, could we please deal with the problems at hand? A anybody want a drink? How about a nice, relaxing drink? Um, no thanks, Billy. Why don't you help yourself? No, I'm fine. Rudy. Uh, would it help to have a piece of evidence? On Estep? <laughs> You got one? He must keep records. The important ones he probably keeps with him. So? Let me have a try at it. You? I have uh, experience. 
There's a plane from Dulles to McCarran. If I leave now, I can be on it. Rudy, I, I got you into this. Yes, you did. And I'm over my head now. I'll play it very close to the belt. Play it close to the belt? Billy, this isn't a game. The man kills people. I know exactly who he is and what he does. No, I am not going to resort to that route. I'm too big a boy to need your permission. Billy! You know, I really would like a drink. Rudy? Did you ever want to have a certain kind of feeling and you just, uh, just couldn't drum it up? <laughs> My problem is usually getting them to go away. I'd like to forgive him and forget it. And I can't. Well, you know what they say, for everything there's a season. It's too soon. But seasons change. So do people. Yes, they do. You've changed. I know. I like it. I didn't change for you. Ah, uh, that was meant as a compliment. You know, it's ironic that people seem to change the most when things are at their worst. Diane leaving, you and Kate. Sitting there with a rug pulled out from under me, I was suddenly able to face some truths about myself. For instance? For instance, I haven't been a good mother. That's a tough one. And my being guilty about it simply made it worse. And for a lady who fought so hard for her independence, not only did I lose mine in our relationship, but then I tried to take away yours. Aren't you being a little hard on yourself? No, no, I think I'm just seeing myself straight and trying to take responsibility for who I am. That's an ambitious undertaking for anyone. <laughs> well, it ain't exactly a forward march into the sunset, but it's a start. And what is the new Miss Porter doing with what's left of the evening? <sighs> Going to get a very solid five hours sleep. Can I buy her a late supper? Rudy, I think we should wait until these hearings are over before we try any late-night, um, suppers. Okay, but you're taking a big chance. After the hearings, I may not be able to afford supper of any description. Well, I want you to consider that when you weigh the case of Kate Jordash versus Maggie Porter. Can she support you? Mr. A. Step in. Do you know where he can be reached? Is Mrs. A. Step in? I tell this is urgent business. Well, when can I speak to her? All right, never mind. Get you out of bed? Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, as a matter of fact, what do you want? Well, for openers, I want to get out of this hallway before maid service runs me over with a linen cart. Some other time, huh? You know, I've been thinking about Estep's offers to you, TV and films. And I thought, hell, I got you this far. So why should somebody else jump on for the cushy part of the ride? That's terrific, Billy, but... No, that, that's not it. I'm here to do good deeds. Only since it's not my usual style, it doesn't come that easy. 
Have you ever tried to turn over a new leaf just because you're so sick of yourself that you think it's fatal? I haven't even had my second cup of coffee yet, and I really don't know what you're talking about. Annie, I've been a tap dancer all my life, moving in circles at the speed of sound. I want to learn to walk one foot in front of the other in a straight line, like normal people. Only I need some help from somebody who really knows me. I need somebody who'll recognize me. I'm doing my old thing and tell me to cool it. We talk about it some other time. I don't really know what loving somebody means. But you mean more to me than anyone. And I need you. So how about you and me? Hello, Billy. Timing's off. Looks like it's the early worm who gets around here. How's Washington? It stinks from something rotten. And the senator? You know how he is. You can't help him now, Billy. He's made his own bed. If there's any way, I'll see that you lie in it. In state. All right, if you don't want me, fine. But if you take him, you're going to lose everything you have, maybe even your own life. Please, Annie, for the long way we've been together, I'm just not supposed to let you by, Mrs. Estef. I'm sorry. I did. Mrs. Estef? Would you tell this man to get out of my way? She just wants to run a short errand, sir. Is there anything that I can get for you, Mrs. Estef? I can get it myself. I'm afraid you can't, ma'am. What do you mean, I can't? I have orders to take care of you here. Orders? What orders? Did you get my husband on the phone? Ma'am. They're your husband's orders. And what if I just walked over to that elevator? Mrs. Estep, please. What would you do? I'd have to stop you. That won't be necessary. Thank you. Can you handle this detail, Sonny, or should I get a man to do it? I can handle it, sir. Then stop looking like you just pushed your mother off the bridge. I, I just hate to treat a lady like that. There's things you'd hate a lot worse. Like how her husband would treat you if you didn't.
Mrs. Estep? Mrs. Estep? Judging by the dust, these have got to be a <coughs> hundred years old. 1944. Ask a silly question. Now, what do Nazi concentration camps have to do with Arizona land transactions of 1949 and gifts to the Holy Order of St. Francis? What are you looking for? Just two more pieces of the puzzle. Can I help? Yes. Cover the doors, the phones, no interruptions. You got it. Do you stop mines? Almost. <laughs> Uh, Kate, I meant... Lunchtime. No, not today. Aw, oh, come on. You know what they say about all work and no play. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to take my chances. Besides, I'm getting used to a caffeine and nicotine diet. Exactly why we're going to the health food emporium. Carrot juice, seeds, sprouts. It'll make a new person out of you. Well, the restoration of Rudy Jordash will have to wait. Okay. I wouldn't want to drag you away from important business. On the other hand, you leave me no choice. Come on, get up. Come on. Damn it, Kate, cut it out. I'm fighting for my life. You don't you understand that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was being selfish. No. You were being Kate. I shouldn't expect you to understand what I'm going through now. I guess Maggie must understand since she works with you. Now, come on. That's got nothing to do with us. You're right. Forget I said it? Mm -hmm. Okay, go back to work. I'm sorry about lunch. It's all right. I'll tell you what. Tonight, I will cook you a meal that'll make you forget you even missed lunch today. Okay. Give me a hint so I have something to look forward to. Okay, uh, picture a plate. Steaming, aromatic, heaped high with a juicy pile of tripe. Tripe? And kelp. How? <laughs> Topped with turnip mash. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and uh, for dessert. I can hardly wait. A slightly chipped fortune cookie with the message, I love you. Get me on the next flight to Montreal. What's in Montreal? With any luck, Albert Dietrich. Oh my God. What? Claire. 
Sarah, is she all right? Apparently. I mean, apparently. She disappeared during the fire and the confusion nobody saw her leave. When did this happen? This morning. Why wasn't I notified? We tried. We couldn't find you. I was in the hotel all the time with Miss Adams. Well, the next time you decide to bed down with a headliner, please let somebody know. All right. All right, I want to talk to the fireman who was in charge. There were no firemen. Security put it out. Security? Why? I didn't think you'd like to read in the morning papers the uh, wife of billionaire sets hotel suite ablaze. Claire did this. Al Barber says she wanted out badly. Do you know where she is now? She's gone to Jordash to testify. What the hell are you talking about? She bought a one-way ticket to Washington under the name Claire Dietrich. Do we, uh, we have any way of stopping her? It's too late. She's landing now. All right. I may not be able to stop Claire, but I sure as hell can stop George Ash. Find Falconetta, get him up here right away. Is that phone working now? Yes. This is Estep. I'm in the suite. Put me through to Washington to Dillon on his private line. Yeah. Dillon? This is Charles. Claire is about to arrive there. She's on her way to see Jordash. See if you can stop her. Well, if you can't, find out who she talks to and what she says. Right. Get back to me as soon as you can. Come in. Mr. Raymond said that you wanted to... I didn't have anything to do with this. And nobody accused you, Anthony. I know, sir, but, but people always laying stuff like this on me, and, and, and it makes me, makes me nervous. Well, relax. How have you been? Well, I've been fine. Been fine, sir. You've been treated well? Oh, uh, sure. I, I have a nice room, and, uh, and the child's good. So you've, uh, you've enjoyed your stay with us? There have been some pleasant moments. Good. Mr. Esther? You're not cutting me loose, are you, sir? On the contrary, Anthony. The best is yet to come. I made a promise to you, remember? It's a promise I'll never forget. And I'm a man of my word. And you, Anthony Falconetti, have been as good as your word. Thank you, sir. And your patience is about to pay off. Now? Now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estelle. Thank you, sir. We'll be going now. Where are you going, Anthony? I'm going east to find Jordash. Well, since there are, uh, there are warrants out for your arrest in six, or is it... Uh... Is it seven eastern states? You think that's very wise? I see what you mean, sir. So, why not bring the senator out here? To you. Well, how do I do? How do I do that, sir? There's a nephew living here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. A young blonde boy. I know where he lives. I know where he works. I know everything about him. Sounds like you've been doing some advanced work, Anthony. Well, I suppose that would bring the senator running out to 
our little part of the world. How is that, sir? If something were to happen to his nephew. <laughs> Do you think you could arrange for that, Mr. Falconetti? <laughs> be my pleasure, sir. your own wife, would you? Don't ever do that. I'm sorry. I just don't want any accidents. Well, we're not going to have to worry about Falconetti anymore. Yeah. Hey, Wes, it's me, Diane, not Falconetti, okay? I found us a place. It's kind of near the tracks, but we'll get used to the trains. It's got a living room and a separate bedroom, and there are a lot of young married couples around. And it's only $80 a month. It's great. Oh, Wes, it's some place we can really settle into. And the landlady said that I can paint the kitchen and I can put up curtains. And Falconetti's never going to find us there because you know what? I said we were Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Jones? Yeah. And with that name, we're going to blend right in and nobody will ever find us. Did you put down a deposit? Part of it. But the rest of the money that you gave me, I spent on a present for our new home. What? Isn't it pretty? I bought a whole set. And it's unbreakable. It'll last us the rest of our lives. No. Don't you like it? I can take it back. What is it, Wes? What are you doing? Man, there isn't going to be a rest of our lives. Why not? I'm leaving. No. We don't have what it takes to spend our lives together. Yes, we do. You said you love me. Love's a lousy word to cover a lot of different feelings. I wish there was another word, because I care for you, I care about you. But, Diane, I don't love you the way a man loves a woman that he makes his wife. Wes. You deserve somebody that belongs to you 100%. And who do you belong to? Look, I'm sorry. It was my mistake. Piling one mistake on top of another is not going to solve anything. Ramona. Are you going to her? Yeah. Why? I thought you couldn't leave here. I thought you had this big business with Falconetti. I do. It's going to change my life. Maybe end it, I don't know. But first I have to see Ramona and tell her what I should have told her before. Wes, if you leave me, God knows what will happen to me. What happens to you now is up to you. You can go back to hustling. You can hurt yourself. You can be good to yourself. I hope you choose to be good to yourself, but I can't make that choice for you. Wes. Yeah, this is West Road Ash. What? Thanks. Ow! 
I got your lady here with me. We're having some fun, me and her. How can Eddie? I thought you might like to join us. The Crow Canyon turn off on 266. Ow! Ow! Listen. I hope you can make it. I'm Senator Jordash from New York. Welcome. Is there a man here named Albert Dietrich? Yes. You would like to see him? Yes. There is Mr. Dietrich. Albert Dietrich. What can I do for you? Are you a German Jew? Did you survive the Nazi concentration camps? Who are you? Are you the Albert Dietrich who entered the United States in 1949 with his daughter Claire? Why are you here? Are you that Albert Dietrich? All I want is a simple yes or no. Are you that Albert Dietrich? Why do you ask these questions? Yes or no? Yes. No. Albert Dietrich died in Bergen-Belsen in 1944. I am Albert Dietrich. You took Albert Dietrich's identity after you'd taken everything he owned. And you did it with the help of a young army lieutenant named Charles Estep. Tell me, how many other poor, helpless Jews did you profit from as they tried to buy their way out of the gas chambers? You are angry and misinformed. How did you do it? Promise them safe passage out. I can't answer questions that... Did you that tell them you'd spare their children? Tell me, just how does a Nazi paper pusher rip off dying people? Ernst Detmer. Allow me to answer those questions. Charles Estep found himself in a position to destroy your military service records, didn't he? 
And Ernst Detmer simply became a name on a war crimes list who had vanished, didn't you? And all it cost you was six million dollars. A man's life is worth whatever he can pay for it. You had discovered Albert Dietrich owned land in the United States. 400,000 acres in Arizona. That's why you came to this country, to lay claim to his land and to sign it over to Charles Estep. An acceptable payment for services rendered. Oh, he was a shrewd young man. And the rest of your spoils you deeded to this order. Why was that? Why do you think? Are you going to tell me it was remorse? Perhaps it was, or perhaps it was only expediency, the price to pay for a place of refuge. Well, you were no longer safe, because I am going to drag you right out in the open. If you can find the evidence to prove this wild tale. I found you, Detmer. I found your name on the order that sent Albert Dietrich to his death. I found the Arizona land transfer and Dietrich's name that you had made your own. And I found your name on the Nazi war crimes list. So you found a name. That's all you found because that's all that exists. No photographs, no fingerprint files, no survivors. So tell me, my self-righteous young friend, will you send a name to prison? Huh?
May I talk with you? How long have you been here? Long enough to figure out where to hide if they came looking. Please, come in. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. When I was a little girl, my father used to bring me sugar. It was very hard to get during the war. And he'd hold them behind his back and make me guess which hand. And then he'd say, Sag nicht zum Führer. Don't tell the Führer. Near the end of the war, things happened very quickly. My mother died. The Allies came. We fled on foot, walking at night, hiding during the day. And my father often carried me. And I loved him then very much. And now? A child loves whoever protects her. My father was not Albert Dietrich. He's Ernst Detmer. You knew that? Not soon enough. I've seen your father. I know the whole story. And there isn't a thing I can do to prove it. I'll testify to my father's crimes and to Charles. I know he was responsible for that union leader's death. I know enough to tell an incredible story. I've been telling incredible stories for months without any evidence to prove them. Did you know that your husband is a benevolent businessman? That you're Claire West? And I'm crazy. Would this help you? After my father told me he was destroying our past, burning all our papers, I took them and I hid them. The past was all I had. And after he left me in America, I used to take them out and look at my mother's signature, my father's face, and remember the times before she died and he used to bring me sugar. And then Wes came to help. And he got Wes. And he drove us here. He drove you? Falconetti beat you both up and then he drove you to the hospital? Uh, nurse, let's get a blanket on this lady. We just want to keep you warm, Mrs. Jordash. Uh, lie down, please. You related to the Jordash boy? Uh, yeah, I'm his brother. How is he? Oh. He's in intensive care. He, uh... Kids, internal bleeding, uh, congested lower left lobe, concussion, it's, it's not too good. What are his chances? I never know how to answer that question. But look, are you going to stick around for a while? I'll be right here. Well, then I'll keep you informed. Uh, nurse, see that she stays put. Billy, stay with me. I'll be right back.
Yes. Rudy, it's me, Billy. I'm in a hospital. What happened? Are you hurt? It's not me, it's Wes. Wes? He's here, and Falconetti got him. How bad is it? Bad. I'll be on the next plane out. Rudy, I'll get the police on it. Maybe they can pick up Falconetti. He's been working as a guard at the Tricor Hotel. No, don't involve the police. I'll take care of Falconetti myself.